I finally get to finish the computer. I have conductor nut, liquid metal, copper integrated heat spreader, and this super cheap sketchy tool from China for delitting the i9. Comes with a little Allen key, and then they're even very considerate, so when it goes south they even give you a razor blade so you can off yourself. Now I've always used Cryonaut on all of my stuff and I actually have a fair amount of tests that I have to do. The first test that I want to do is obviously delitting the i9, but before I put the copper integrated heat spreader on it, I want to see the performance of just liquid metal with the stock integrated heat spreader and then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the copper one to see if a full copper integrated heat spreader is better than the factory one while keeping the thermal compound the same between both of them and using cryonaut on the heat spreader itself. So it'll be CPU, conductonaut, heat spreader, cryonaut, and then the cooler to see if this copper one is literally just aesthetic or if it actually makes any difference at all and then whichever is the best of the two that's the one that I'm going to be running with liquid metal on it between the heat spreader and the cooler. I don't know. If you're doing this, then, you know, little cheap D-lid tool from China Land, copper integrated heat spreader, thermal grizzly conductonaut, liquid metal, and if you want to play it safe, then you could also use cryonaut, having liquid metal on both of them. You might as well. It's, it's just more beneficial. There's no real reason to be using this, unless for some reason you have an aluminum heat sink, in which case you want to stay away from this because that'll eat aluminum. And just before I start, I want to mention that I'm using the Corsair H170i, and when I installed this, I had cleaned off the factory thermal compound that it comes with, and I replaced it with cryonaut. So right now the computer is using this on it and those are my baseline readings. So I literally have to run all of these benchmarks four times to get all the different variations of results. Like it's so conflicting doing all of this stuff because I just want to use the computer. I just want to play some games. I just want to edit videos. But because all of the tests for this computer are the videos, I can't just do it. I have to record the entire thing and then everything is just this giant process and I don't God, it sucks. Okay, let's just get on with this. So we got the i9, cleaned off all the thermal paste. We have to use this super sketchy razor blade. Like look at that, that's crazy. Try to get in between and cut uh, the adhesive around the outside. So we can start from the vent, which is right here. You can see this little uh, like cutout thing where it comes in. So we can just start cutting from there and always cut towards yourself in like a sharp, jagged motion. Wow, this razor blade is absolutely terrifying to use. So just slowly rocking that back and forth, cutting through all the adhesive. And there we are. So we've cut through the entire thing. Like I don't want to go too deep, but just looking at this one here. If you flip this over, the border all around the edge is the only portion that can actually have the adhesive on it. So I pretty much just took this and only went as far as this border just to make sure I cut through all of the adhesive on the stock heat spreader without actually going all the way through and hitting anything else. All of the adhesive is cut all the way around the end. This has to go in, but because of the direction of everything on the bottom of it, if we put it in sideways, it fits but it doesn't actually go all the way up to the edges. Like it has a gap and that's because everything is hitting. So when we're applying pressure, if it's applying slightly offset, that could be enough to rip one of those off. So the way we're gonna put this in is vertical so that way we can read Intel. And then we're also going to be flipping it around and going back and forth to try and get it from both sides. So we're working the heat spreader back and forth until we break through all of the soldered thermal compound that's on here. So now we just take this little tool thing here, take the flat side, put it in, and just thread this in. Now we have to apply heat because it's soldered. Uh, because if we just do this cold, it could actually crack the die. I'm just on low heat. We're just gonna warm it up. We just want to kind of do a couple light turns. So it started to move a little bit. So now I'm gonna loosen it off. Now I could just go for broke and get this right out in one go, but it's very risky. I'm gonna flip it around, fairly toasty. Now we can tighten it up again until that heat spreader just barely starts to move. Back off again, gonna flip it around which you can actually see all of that black, that's what we just cut through. So that's how much this has actually moved. So it is moving. So this third one right here is probably the one where I can safely break it free. Give a little bit more heat. We should just be able to move this. Oh yeah, it's moving really easy now. Starting to lift on this corner. 
There it goes. You can see like the solder material that's on here. Now all I gotta do is clean up all this adhesive all the way around the chip too. Clean up this solder compound here, which we actually have to scrape off and then we'll try and get the rest of it with rubbing alcohol. The biggest thing that I want to test is to see if liquid metal makes a huge difference or if a copper IHS is actually going to make the bigger difference. Because realistically, these are both copper. This one's just plated, but this one is a lot heavier. Like, it has a lot more material to it. So you can see that the edges and everything are all machined down on this one. So this actually has significantly more material and there's no plating over top of it. So it's direct copper, which might have its benefit. Now this stuff is like super, super soft. Um, I need a real razor blade. This isn't gonna work. Okay, perfect. Nice rusty razor blade. Definitely the level of safety that I'm going for. Gonna make sure it's completely flat and very lightly work it through. It probably looks a lot sketchier than it actually is. Like I'm even cutting towards myself and when it breaks free, I'm like, that's it. Like, like I'm literally just applying enough pressure that it's cutting through and I'm holding this by the blade. So like, that's how little pressure I'm actually pushing, which really makes this a lot less sketchy than I thought it was gonna be when I was watching videos of people doing this and they were scraping this compound off. And I was just thinking like, if that slips, like that die is totaled. Now that I'm actually doing it, it's really not that scary at all. It looks significantly more dangerous than it actually is. Anyway, I'm gonna keep cleaning this off, let the camera charge for a bit, so that way it doesn't die when I'm in the middle of something. And I'll just come back when all this is cleaned up. Well, it's not a clean process by any means, but I got it all cleaned off. And this is the stock integrated heat spreader. Clean that off. I just want to cover these contacts right here with nail polish. So if it does leak out, it's not going to touch those. That's good. Now, I just got to let that dry completely before I turn this on because it's flammable. So if this gets too hot, that's going to light on fire. So I'm just going to leave that for a minute. And I'll start putting the liquid metal on here, which we can conveniently see exactly where it was. That's good. Now, just to adhere this on so it actually, you know, it like sticks or whatever, because I do have to put this in, but because I'm taking it right back off, I'm not gonna use adhesive. So I'm actually just going to use some nail polish. I'm just gonna kind of build up a drop in each corner. This vent portion goes on the bottom away from the little cutouts. Now we just have to kind of center it up. It doesn't have to be too precise or anything because we're taking it right back off. I'm content with that. That's pretty good. That's not falling off. I get to pop this back in and I will put Cryonaut back on it and we can run these benchmarks again and see if this is really worthwhile. Now we can take some Cryonaut. Everything is plugged back in exactly the way it was. So now we can test it out. Oh my god. Uh, this is the copper one right here. I just lined this up with it to make this outline. So that way the liquid metal is exactly in the position of the die. But this is ready to attach and put silicone around the outside. So this isn't going to be some super crazy riveting process or anything. Oh my god, this is gonna suck. Uh, oh, Jesus, how am I gonna do this? Like a tiny little skim. Oh, that's already too much. Oh, Jesus. Oh god, I'm getting it all over my hands. Oh my god, it's everywhere. Okay, mint, so that's way too much on everything, all over my hand. Good, good, good. Um, I need to somehow clean like half of this off without removing the liquid metal. Oh my god. This is not good. Oh, that works really well. Okay. Well now, would you look at that? Man, that worked pretty good. So now, all I gotta do is just stick this on. Like that. Let's make sure that's nice and centered. I only have to press it down to make sure that the adhesive that I just put on is not making a space between the die and the IHS. Very lightly going to pop this in here. And now this doesn't have to be super, super tight. It literally just has to be like weight on it. That's it. You can still wiggle it around a little bit. Now I just get it to wait about an hour. Liquid metal, put back on. It's all good. I just gotta clean it all up because Jesus Christ, this was messy. I'm going to liquid metal the top of the IHS and the bottom of the cooler and just kind of put that back on. And we can actually see the difference of liquid metal on the face of the IHS. Uh, so essentially the exact same process that I did on the reverse side of this where I masked off the actual die itself 
and then use that tape as a template. I'm gonna kind of do the same thing here, but using these right here to figure out a square for here so that I know where to put it on here. Not like it really matters because it's so far away. It's just, I don't want to use excess liquid metal because that stuff is like $50 a tube in Canada. So it's like ridiculous and I don't want to waste it. Have a nice coating on here and here and the holes line up exactly with the square right from here using tape the exact same way I did the reverse side. So now this can just go right on here like that. I'm very impressed. Uh, one thing that I did off camera, uh, when I first had it all set back up and I was about to start running all the thermal tests, I noticed that for some reason, one core was running like really cold. Like I was doing like the entire benchmark and everything was 34 degrees Celsius and every other one of them was high 50s. I had no idea why, so I took the cooler off uh, just to reseat it. And when I reseated the CPU, I started getting a boot loop. So I think that copper integrated heat spreader is a little bit thicker, so it's applying too much pressure. So when I was putting the tension arm down, I just, I did it like a few times to kind of like work it in because I noticed that when I took it off, there were little grooves in the copper just because it's like soft material, which you can even see on the factory one, there's like little indents because this is copper as well. I think it just kind of had to be worked in or whatever, so something wasn't connecting or making a full connection, but now that it's been reseated and I kind of worked the tension arm in a few times to sort of like make a groove in the little mounting ears that are on it, every single core is running similar temperatures, so I haven't had any issues with it uh, other than that little problem. Uh, but when I was putting it back on, just for like some insurance, I took some black duct tape and I cut like a 10 millimeter strip of it, like thickness, like a one centimeter strip, about 10 centimeters long, something like that. And I just put it along the bottom and then up the angled sides on each side. So that way when I was putting the cooler back on, that duct tape actually goes right up against where the, like the tension bracket is that actually holds the CPU down. If any liquid metal leaks out, it's gonna leak onto that duct tape, which goes around in like a little like bowl. So it's just gonna catch anything, even if it does leak. So now it's it's literally bulletproof. Even if it leaks, the computer's completely safe just by adding a little strip along the bottom. And because it's duct tape, it's like designed for being on like high temperature areas. Like most duct tapes advertise like something ridiculous, like 200 degrees Fahrenheit resistance or something like that, like over 90 degrees Celsius. And duct tape isn't flammable. The adhesive just fails. Not only is that not going to happen after these results, but even in some sort of catastrophic failure where this did get to 90 degrees Celsius, the only thing that's going to happen is the adhesive is going to weaken and the duct tape's going to sag down. Like, that's it. Uh, definitely a good mod. Heat resistant, it's within the temperature range of the computer itself, so there's no issues at all there. Now, for all of these tests, I had the fans locked at 50%. I just kept every single one on with the exact same fan curve, just a straight line, 50%. I had the CPU running at 5 gigahertz, all eight cores, and the ambient room temperature was 72 degrees Fahrenheit, or like 22 degrees Celsius. So now in the stock configuration with the i9 right out of the box, like with the soldered compound, or well, I guess it's not even compound, it's like a thermal interface material, but like the, the stock stuff with thermal grizzly cryonaut between the integrated heat spreader and the cooler. So that's just your run of the mill setup, completely stock CPU with just some good compound. I sustained a temperature of 68 degrees Celsius. The next test that I did was delitting the i9 and using Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut in replacement to the solder compound with the stock integrated heat spreader. So that's delid, remove the solder, add liquid metal, put the stock integrated heat spreader back on, applying cryonaut and the cooler on top. And with all the same variables checked, I sustained 62 degrees Celsius. The next test was the exact same thing, but with the billet copper integrated heat spreader. Because I wanted to see if like that piece was solely for aesthetics or if there was actually something better for that. Delitted i9, no solder interface material, conduct not liquid metal, but this time I used the billet copper integrated heat spreader. Then I used cryonaut and then the cooler. And with that, 
I actually ran 61 degrees Celsius. And then lastly, the most impressive one of all, so it's the D-lidded I-9, no solder material, conductinot liquid metal, the billet copper integrated heat spreader, and then again, I use conductinot liquid metal, and then the cooler on top. And with that, I've sustained 57 degrees Celsius. Like that's insane. That's an 11 degrees Celsius drop from stock. And like the room temperature is fairly high. So if it were a little bit cooler in here to reflect on the computer temperature, I could probably sustain temperatures in the mid 50s. And just for fun, I wanted to see what it would do at 100% fan speed. The most impressive result of all was 49 degrees Celsius at five gigahertz on all eight cores. But I mean, it sounded like a jet taking off. So that's not really a practical situation to be running the computer like that. But this liquid metal stuff is nuts. I can't believe how good it actually is. And now with that little piece of duct tape that I put on the bottom of the cooler, just to kind of catch anything that might fall between the integrated heat spreader and the cooler, I am more than confident with how this is set up. And then going to that billet copper integrated heat spreader was another degree drop. But the reason for that is probably because the heat spreader itself is machined perfectly flat. So that's probably in the same ballpark of just lapping the factory integrated heat spreader because that's not perfectly flat. A lapped stock IHS versus a billet copper one are probably identical results as long as that is perfectly flat. However, the copper one does look cooler. So I don't know. I, I would just go with the copper one because it's already perfectly flat and you have to de-lit it anyway. So well, why put the effort into this one when you can just de-lid liquid metal and then put the billet copper one on and then you're done. And it's just way less work. It looks cooler. I would just go that route. This is 100% worth it if you have the skill level to actually take this on because it's definitely very scary doing this to a processor that's so expensive. Especially when you finally get it all done, you install the new processor that you've just modified and it starts boot looping because there's just too much pressure. So you gotta take note that you are now the manufacturer that takes care of any warranty process once you do something like this. But the gains are worth it. I don't know, this is, uh, this is great might have a weird addiction to liquid metal. Uh, I've been thinking about putting it in my camera, putting it in my phone. I don't know, what else could I put it in? Because this stuff is fantastic and I, I kinda wanna risk a few more devices because this is great. I don't know, uh, if you found something useful, then like the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, that helps out. Or join the members program if you wanna like help support doing all of this stuff. Or, you know, don't do any of it. I'm not telling you what to do.